This is the first of a multi-part series re looking at a review of the prerequisites for your college algebra course. Let's begin our discussion by looking at rational numbers. Rational numbers were invented to handle the following kind of situation. Suppose we've got something that we've divided into an equal number of parts, like this disk that we've divided into five equal parts. Now let's suppose that we have three of those five equal parts. We use the notation 3 over 5 to represent that, saying that we have three of the five equal parts. Now let's suppose that we divided each of the pieces in the, in the whole into three equal parts apiece. So what we're saying is that we're going to three times the number of pieces that we have. So now instead of having five equal pieces, we have 15 equal pieces, and we have nine of those 15 equal pieces. Since the number of pieces was multiplied by three, instead of ha having those three larger pieces, we now have 3 times 3 of those larger pieces, and we have 3 times 5 of those uh, larger pieces in the whole. So we say that 3 fifths is equi equivalent or equal to 9 fifteenths. Let's use the language of algebra to discuss this in more general terms. We say that a rational number is any number that can be written in the form a over b where a is an integer and b is a non-zero integer. Then, if m is a non-zero integer, then a over b is equivalent to m times a over b times m. We say that a rational number is in reduced form if there is no common factor in the numerator, that's what we call the top number, and uh, the, de the denominator, that's what we call the bottom number. So let's examine, an, let's look at an example. We want to reduce to lowest terms this uh, rational number. So let's reduce the rational number 850 over 23,175. First, we'd like to factor both the numerator and the denominator. So building a factor tree for 850, we notice that it's the same as uh, 10 times 85. 10 factors to be 2 times 5. And 85 factors to be 5 times 17. We also want to factor the denominator, so we'll worry about factoring uh, 23,175. Well, I can see right off that 23,175 fact has a factor of 5 in it, so I divided 5 in to find out what this other factor was. And now 5 again goes into this amount. And now we suspect that maybe 937 927, I'm sorry, I got to correct that. The 927 is divisible by 3, so we'll com complete the rest of the factoring tree. So once we have both the numerator and the denominator factored, we can rewrite the fraction. So we now know that our fraction is equal to this product on the top divided by this product on the bottom because 850 is equal to 2 times 5 times 5 times 17 and the 23,175 is, is uh, this product. Hang on, there's an error there. There, that's, there, that's better. Notice that there's only two factors of 3 and there's two factors of 5 in the 137. Now as we look at that, we can see that there's a common factor of 5 and a 5 on top. In other words, a common factor of 25 on top, a common factor of 25 on the bottom. So this uh, simplifies to be 2 times 17 on top and, uh, and uh, 3 times 3 times 103 on the bottom. Now although we expect you to know how to do this by hand and to actually be able to carry out these calculations to reduce a fraction, 
you should also know that there is software that can assist in doing these kinds of things. Let's look at one example real quickly. There are many pieces of software that can actually reduce a fraction just automatically. I'm using a software right now called GeoGebra. You can uh, access that on the internet. Let me see. It's called GeoGebra as you can see there. Uh, here's the input. It has a command called factors. There, So we could use uh, factors uh, to calculate. Let me just retype that so you can see what we're doing. Factors of 850 and that's the result there. It's one factor of 2, 2 factors of 5, and 1 factor of 17. Tells you what the prime factors are and how many copies of that factor there are. Now one time or another we may ask you to reduce a fraction without using your calculator by factoring the numerator, factoring the denominator, and look, looking for common factors so that this will reduce. We'll use a similar idea once we look at polynomials. Okay, that's the end of this particular part of the review. We'll add some more parts as time goes on.